biochemical quality assessment. So here you see that uh, the diversity in a phenotypic form, the one which you can see by eyes, is for the inflorescence or the grain. Uh, when we talk of biochemical composition, that is also a phenotype. But only thing is that we can't see that protein or starch or sugar by naked eyes. But it's also a phenotype. And then you see the collection of, of amaranth, it is about 4,000, in buckwheat, 1,000, and in chickpea, 15,000. So it's not possible to evaluate such a huge collection by the traditional for the assessment of quality for seed, for processed products, fruits, beverages, for different traits like proximate components, vitamins, fatty acid, vitamins, uh, phenolic compounds, different organic compounds, the where you have the dipole moment between the two atoms. It is a machine learning technique where the computer learns from the spectral data and the wet chemistry data. And once it is learned, and if the learning is provided from the diverse sample where the range of variation for different state is very big, then the learning is good. And that way we can get a robust prediction model. And that can be used for screening of germplasm, can be used by food industries for the quality assessment of the raw materials, and can be used by breeders for in the nutritional breeding programs as a tool to see the inheritance of different nutrient traits in the breeding populations. You find that NIR is, as we say, near infrared. It is very close to the visible range. And uh, uh, the interaction is that it gives the overtones and combinations uh, of the absorption. So how it is? Oxygen and hydrogen dipole moment is different than the carbon and hydrogen dipole moment. So the stretching is different. Similarly, for NH and SH different bonds, the stretching is different. And the energy from that finally combines and gives the uh, combinations. As a result, the spectra which you get is a sloppy kind, very broad peaks, will not interest anybody. But if you go to the second or third derivative, then you can see the peaks are sharp. Now, this data is usable, and this spectral data is trained against the wet chemistry data of the same sample for which the spectral data is collected. So what we use, we have used the instrument FOSS NIR 6500, software is WinSI version 3.1. So what we did, we did the wet chemistry of 150 exceptions, which were pre-screened on the NIR, and we divided the sample set into two sets. One is a set of 100 sample, another of 50 sample. The 100 sample set was used for developing the calibration equation, and then this equation that generated from 100 set was used to predict the value of the 50 accession set. And then the predicted values and the actual lab values of those 50 accessions were compared to find the goodness of fit of the prediction. So what the criteria for model selection is that the R square should be more than 0.8 and standard deviation to standard error of prediction, which is also known as uh, ratio of performance to deviation, should be two or more. And if it comes four, it is considered equivalent to wet chemistry. And if it is five, it is considered even better than wet chemistry because there is no error of uh, handling. Uh, so in the results, here is a scatter plot of amaranth oil uh, qu uh, quantity. And uh, you can see the good agreement. On x-axis is the NIR predicted value. On y-axis is the actual laboratory value. And you can see there is a good agreement between the lab value and the predicted value for oil as well as protein. Same is the case for oleic acid and uh, methionine in, in amaranth and buckwheat. In amaranth, and, uh, for amino acids, we made a joint model of amaranth and buckwheat because the number of samples together were not, uh, uh, together came to 150, otherwise they were 150. So in, you can see that in methionine, the band is very narrow and you can see the R square is 0 0.9 and above, and the uh, ratio of performance to deviation is more than three. Whereas in the above case in, of oleic acid, the band is a bit wide. It's mainly because once the R square value improves, then the predicted accuracy is improved. You can find that uh, for uh, all the traits, we have got the RPD values more than two. And uh, if you see, uh, see the lowermost rows, I, 
value accessions which were validated for the predicted values. The values are in close, close agreement. For example, in oil, predicted value is 11.7, but the actual laboratory value is 11.2. That much deviation is even possible even when we do the wet chemistry. So it's in the close agreement. Similarly are the other results. Same is the case for the buckwheat. All RPD values are more than 2 and R square values except for steric which is 0.7, others are more than 0.8. And again you can see the accuracy of predicted value and the laboratory value. For, uh, for example, palmitic acid uh, where the R square value is 0.78, the deviation is a bit more, 17.4 is the predicted value and laboratory value is 15.8. But if you see the steric acid, uh, 3.28 and 3.25. I just, uh, I will like, I would like to highlight the methionine case where the R square value is 3.55 and methionine predicted value uh, 2.7 and laboratory value of 2.65 in the amaranth. Here is a case for the chickpea where R square value we got 0.9 and RPD value 0.33 for protein, similar is the case for starch. And these are the ranges of variation. For example, in the 700 accessions which we screened with this prediction model, we got a range of starch from 22 to 42. Similarly, for the other traits. Interesting thing to note is that if you see the sum of proximates, in this only is ash is missing, which is around 3 to 4 percent. Sum of proximate is very well within the range of 100 plus minus 10 and where the available carbohydrate is, is the total soluble sugar and total starch. These are the some models which have been developed at our laboratory. And uh, so conclusion, this model was working very well for as a screening criteria and uh, accuracy we obtained in chickpea was more because here in this case we use the homogenized floors instead of grains. And uh, uh, in essential amino acid case, we made the mixed model of amaranth and buckwheat. That was also successful. So mixed models are possible. And uh, it can be used for mining of trade specific germplasts and can be used by crop breeders, seed industry, and food industry to ascertain the quality. Thank you.